is insignificant. It seems like trivial, but at the same time, it can really uh, you know, shift us and the world. Oh, yeah, this is what the smile deck looks like. And the ideas get harder as you get to the face cards. Uh, so, and, and it's like four suits are four different things for yourself, for the environment, uh, for those you know, and for strangers. Um, so really beautiful. Um, and I wanted to maybe end with a video, or we could maybe do the video at the end, super end. Uh, if you guys have questions, how, uh, we, we can engage. Are we, how are we doing in terms of the flow of time? We're doing fine. Okay. Um, so may, maybe we can do some, uh, if you have some comments or reflections, uh, we can engage with that. Uh, and then we'll end with this super cool video uh, by our wonderful friend Nemo, uh, who is, well, I'll introduce, I'll introduce him before the video. He's created a couple of viral videos, which is really a testimony to the power of love. Uh, he's done it uh, in a way that uh, thousands and thousands of people are inspired by it, but he's done it without a budget, and it's a video that's gone viral. So, and it's about kindness, it's about love, it's about goodness. Uh, so really cool. But before we get to that, maybe we pause here uh, and see if uh, you guys have any questions, comments, reflections, or challenges. You know, a lot of people don't, you would think that everyone in the world would like generosity, but a lot of people think it's like really weak to be generous. Innovation comes if you're competitive, if you like beat other people away. And if you don't have that motivation, you will never like, move forward as. So if you feel that way, great. I'm happy to, you know, I'll put a general schmutz I've got I'll resist and then I'll love you the other day. <laughs> um, so yeah, anything is good. And silence is good as well. <laughs> Then how should we have to be so good? How should he uh, react? So, and this is a question everywhere. Even anytime you hold a circle, like on a Wednesday at our house, you have 60 minutes for the circle. And if one person takes all the time, how do you react? If one person, so anytime you have a shared resource, you have to cooperate and understand that everyone has to take a certain part of it. If you have someone who gets super greedy, what are you going to do? I think you have to understand the nature of greed. So one of my friends, he works with a lot of prisoners, people who have been in prison for life. They've committed, committed some really hard, tough crimes. And he had a very beautiful quote. He says, hurt people hurt people. People who are hurt are going to pay forward that. And then he was sharing this with some of the prisoners. And they came up with this other quote. It says, healed people, heal people. So in that moment, when someone is being negative or aggressive or greedy, however way, how, whichever form it manifests, is the moment to practice forgiveness. Is the moment what love you do? An eye for an eye, in the world, the world is blind. It's got Say. So how, what is the creative expression of giftivism? What is the creative expression of your generosity in that moment? But you can only come up with that if you don't see it as a greedy act. If you say, look, other people have taken from him, so he thinks the best way to build community is to take all the time or to take all the fruit. But if you go to that person and you tell him, brother, I'm your neighbor here. These are fruits from that woman over there. You know that old woman that nobody knows what she's doing? We actually went and befriended her. And this is her gift for all of us. And it's not just to feed everyone, it's also to give love to every single person. That's why we're doing this, right? And as soon as that person starts to feel the intention, starts to get connected to the deeper nuance of what's going on, then they will be greedy. Then they will honor the comments. Then they will start calling. So this idea of what happens when you are faced with something difficult, I think in our world today there are so many places where people are greedy. 
right? There's so many places where, in fact, our whole system is based on that idea. We propagate that greed. So I think in that kind of setting, we need creative expressions of generosity. That's exactly what Mephibism is. So when someone, like there was an uncle who would, you know, take a lot of time in the circle. One approach is let's have more rules, okay? Or let's have a bell. Ding! And then a louder bell, and a louder bell, you know. And okay, uncle, you're just gonna have to pass, you know. Another approach is to go deeper in the circle, uh, and actually pay attention and say, okay, and hold space with this uncle in person and in private, so that he feels so connected that he's gonna put the interest of the circle before his own interests. And that's work. It's hard work. And our world needs that kind of hard work today. For us to reach out to every person who does us wrong, we can say, look, I oppose this action, but I love you. I bring them all that together. And in creative ways. Thank you. Does that make some sense? <laughs> Yeah. The couple who comes to the barista shop, the, the, the 19 years old uh, girl who comes to the barista shop, yeah. and she pays for the next upcoming. How do you guess that uh, next coming uh, the person will be a family, a single person, a, a couple? <laughs> how do you guess and how, how much you can pay? And, what if the coffee shop person doesn't accept what you are paying? This is might might be less, might be less than, uh, than what you might have in your pocket. Okay, sure, sure. So I think the idea is it. So there's multiple things. The easy way to do it is to go in a place where everyone has to pay the same amount, like a toll booth. Everyone pays the same amount of toll, so you pay a toll for the car behind you. That's easy. In this kind of case, you what she did is she says, "I'll come back and pay." You just tell them. So she was right there on the side, she waited, and she says, whatever it is, I'll do it. In some cases, people will say, look, I have a 20, or I have a, you know, 1,500, you know, and this is, go and pay however many people you can pay for the next. In some cases, they will say, not just the next, whichever ones you feel empowered. Like, if you feel someone needs to, needs an extra smile, do this for them. That way you're empowering that guy behind the counter. So there are so many different ways to kind of approach it. But if that other person doesn't understand, which many times they won't, right? So they will even, so sometimes they'll be like, you know, like we have a, in San Francisco, there's a Bay Bridge, and we're all from San Francisco. So we've taken, smile cards have taken the whole area by storm, you know? So someone will go and pay toll, and the woman behind the toll booth, at one point this happened to one of the guys, is like, you know, I've been seeing a lot of these. Where can I get some? You know, the toll attendant lady wanted some. But on the flip side, there are some places where they'll say, look, this is nuisance. You know, I don't, whatever, do it some other time, not on my watch, you know, somewhere else, not in this shop. And I don't think we need to get disheartened by that. We just need to practice giftivism on that guy itself. You know, it's like, oh, that's great, brother. And just give him love, you know, like smile at him and say, oh, that's okay, you know, but how are you doing? Or give, give something to that guy itself, you know, say, oh, okay, but can I give you this chocolate, you know, or go back and give him something. Sensitize that guy. So first sensitization is you, second sensitization is the person in front of you, and then the third sensitization is the ripple. So it's not to focus just on the ripple, start from here, start from there, and then let the ripple happen. But people immediately get a doubt that why he is doing it for me? What is, oh. what is this behind the scenes? Exactly. Exactly. Why is it? People are going to be skeptical. This is exactly why we need this. People don't trust. My, my Kakiwa always says that 20 years ago, when you go on a train, I'm sure it's just true, true in Andhra Pradesh also, is she says, if you ever had food, you would always share with people in your compartment. In fact, not only would you share, if you're taking food, you always get 50% more, you know, because you're going to share. Now, you do it, and they'll be like, oh, I don't know what kind of drugs you put into this, you know, I'm not going to know, forget it, you know. So everyone's just done their own thing. In fact, Sometimes you have, like, yeah, two days ago, someone was telling me a couple celebrated their 10 year anniversary, but instead of like, going to a restaurant and having a meaningful conversation, they're both on their mobiles. So we've lost that, that connection, and so inevitably you're going to get the skepticism. And that's good. This is exactly why we need to do it. If we've lost trust and faith in each other, 
if we've started to believe that everyone is out to get us and to get each other, that's, just, that's not the kind of world we want. We're, that's not our highest, that may be our base instincts, but our highest potential is much more than that. So how do we bring that out? And so the more that people say no, or why, or maybe, you know, then you say, okay, I just need to be creative and get to that. Because we shouldn't have that kind of world where people don't. But what has happened is the business world has overtaken all this, right? And they said, because they've taken, they've turned free into marketing. So anything that's free, it means I'm going to upsell something else later. But I'm giving this no strings attached, purely for love. Like my mom and dad are hosting this, there is no donation box in there. And a lot of times people have a hard time accepting it. I met a guy, he's like, he's telling me, wow, the parents are amazing, what you guys are doing is amazing. I said, oh great, you must have been there. He was like, no, I only went once. So why just once? He says, I was uncomfortable receiving a meal. Because <laughs> he's so used to buying everything. And you may think, wow, like I don't have that problem. So I say, wow, there are people like that, but there are, because they're so conditioned by our dominant mainstream world. So if it's all of, the more people say no, it's all the more sign that we need more and more of this. Thank you so much, everyone. Very inspiring, and uh, definitely it's uh, a big leap for the whole mankind. Uh, simple, random acts of kindness and generosity. The need of the hour. <laughs> and medically, I can uh, support this because recently I read a paper, research paper, about uh, whenever a person is doing a kind of uh, uh, random acts of kindness and generosity, their uh, body is producing endorphins, serotonin, and which actually makes people to come out of depression. People are suffering in isolation and the lack of trust, and uh, they are kapooned. And uh, this is the need of the hour. They can really uh, come out with such, uh, uh, you know, aliveness. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, that was thank was, you. I'll, I'll end yeah. with a story. <laughs> Do you have a question? Yeah. Just yell it out. Yes. So how, how did you feel like uh, when you said you, uh, you know, like you left out, you sold off everything and then you started, uh, wanted to start a new life, right? Yeah. Your wife, so you might have got a lot of repulsion from your parents also, like what are you doing, what are you trying to do? Where is that this thing is leading to you? Because you're, you're going to have a family, then how are you going to take care of everything? There are a lot of things, you know, like sure. uh, the social world uh, around you is very, it's very difficult to break through that cycle. So how, how did you, you know, like, go through that? What do you do for that? Are, do we have time? Are we okay? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, when I was in my early 20s, I decided I just wanted to dedicate my life to serving other people <coughs> in small, big ways. And my parents were immigrants. They immigrated from here. We all went to the U.S. And they made a lot of sacrifices so I could get a good education. And I got out from college at a time when the dot-com industry was booming. I had education that was perfect. It was like I had the network that was perfect. I could have really done something very big, perhaps even like Facebook. Um, I had all these conditions. It was almost like I learned how to swim. I learned how to like you know surf, and the big wave had come. And this was the time, you know. And in that setting. I said, Mom, Dad, yeah, I'm not interested in money. I would just, I just want to like help people and serve people and become a better person. And they said, you know, okay, do all that after you make a lot of money and then you retire, you know. <laughs> and since you could probably do it at 30, you know, that's fine. Then you get your whole life, you know. Um, and so it was a very real thing. But there was a deep part of me that said, so we disagreed. Uh, my mom and I, in particular. But there was a very big part of me that said that even if I disagree, I want to take them with me. That I may, so we sat at the table, so to speak, for three months. We didn't see eye to eye. 
And I said, if I'm going, I'm going with you. So I said, not only do, is my conviction is strong that this is what I have to do, but I'm also going to do it with you. And we didn't know how, so we disagreed for three months. And it's very important to hold space for that. Like I could have said, like any like young, I don't need you. You know, I was making it up at the time. I could, I don't need my parents. I don't need their permission. I can do whatever I want. But how do you learn? To, but that's not wholesome in the long term. So if you burn, if you build three bridges but burn two along the way, mathematically, it's yeah, good math. You know, net sum is like net is net gain. You know, but that's not good in the long term. So to really hold all our relationships and be gentle, not be aggressive, not be ambitious, not say, oh, I'm gonna quit everything right now. What's the rush? Work with what you have. If your conditions are you need to be at home, if your conditions are you need to take care of your parents, if your conditions are you have a family or you have other issues that you need, work with that. So it's not about getting to a certain state. The state, different equilibrium points come when the time right is, as the Buddha said. It's not for you to figure all that out. Your job is just to work with what's there in front of you. And with whatever life gives you, whatever colors that life gives you, because ultimately every circumstance is a different color, you have to make art. Your whole life is a giant art project. Every moment. In this moment, can we make art? In a moment where you have to go out and take care of other people because there's no other that's the your circumstances, make art. If you're a complete renunciate, make art. If you're in front of people, make art. If you're sitting down and bowing to people, make art. Art in the sense that there's no recipe. Right? It's not a pre, it's not, just because it worked like that for him doesn't mean it's gonna work like that for you. And that's not the point. We don't need to copy paths. We need to seek what people are seeking. And we need to align with that seeking in a much purer way. And when we have that, I think we have, we pay a whole new possible. Yeah, last question. Inspiration. What is it? Inspiration behind you. What was that? Did Rama Maharishi is inspiration? Oh, inspiration? I, I certainly, Rama Maharishi. I mean, I don't I don't think I've ever met anyone who has said they're not inspired like, by Rama Maharishi. Yeah. He's like a universally inspirational person. Um, but I would say, you know, Gandhi in the field of social action, Karma Yoga. Vivekananda in the field of, I would say, Bhakti. I mean, there are so many uh, elements to him. With meditation, Buddha in particular, Moinka, uh, who's, you know, Vipassana meditation, I, I practice uh, daily. Uh, so I, I think I mean Rajyo, you know, in terms of the right thinking, Jay Krishna Murthy. That time I was seeing you on the website. Yeah. But behind that, the behind we had, that? In the environment itself, we have taken the decision, like uh, Rama Maharishi also came at the same time here. Right? Yeah, no, I think behind that, really, the answer is life in front of me. You, in this moment. <laughs> How did the universe respond to my personal journey? Of yeah. Uh, okay. So far, so good. <laughs> Thumbs up. I would recommend it. <laughs> I really appreciate this concept and the uh, innovative ideas. I think most of the people who came to for the class are really transformed. They want to do something. What I want to transform is Hyderabad, how you can help me out in this way. I'm determined to change the things because I strongly believe in joy of sharing with others. Yeah. But I need a support and technology. How can I completely transform this Hyderabad? I'm ready to take this class. In what way you can help me out? This is my question. So here would be my response to it. That is the wrong question. That so many times, see Einstein said, if I had um, if I had an hour to solve a situation and my life depended on it, I would spend the first 55 minutes figuring out the right question. Then the answer is very easy in the next five minutes. So to ask that question, to say how can I change, I think there's a lot of noble compassion. Like there is suffering around Hyderabad and in every city where you go, there's so much suffering. And we want to help and we want to serve. And so I think there's a lot of compassion that's there. But the greatest lever for doing that is being the change. Just this morning at ISB, I shared that Gandhi didn't say you must do the change. 
or go out and create the change, or go out and talk about the change, or preach the change. He said he was be the change. So to say that, how can I be the change in an even greater way, with even greater tenacity, with conviction, that somehow, see, we are all connected. Your heart, if it is truly beating to this idea that I want to serve those around me, in Hyderabad, why even limited to Hyderabad? You know, like in wherever you are, if you if that conviction is super strong, then different doors will open up. For you. And until that's not there, you can, you just have to practice. You have to practice with what's in front of you. For example, Gandhi and Tagore met one time. We're talking about Tagore. Two weeks before the Gandhi march. See, you think of someone like Gandhi, and he says, oh wow, he created change the history of the world. Incredible guy. But actually, two weeks before the Gandhi march, Tagore comes to the Gandhi ashram, and he says, Bahu, the whole world is counting on you. What are you going to do? And Gandhi's response, he says, I don't know. But you can be sure I'm praying. Pray, meditate, but power. So even someone like Gandhi, if you look at all the big people who have created dramatic change, if you want to change Hyderabad, you say, well, Gandhi definitely could have changed Hyderabad. But how would he have done it? The greatest lever is in being changed. So when you take a smile partner, when you do pay coffee for the person behind you, it's not the external act that's as important. There will be an external ripple, but what's really significant is the internal ripple effect. And that internal ripple effect, what happens in your heart and in your ecosystem? See, at an external level, we are separate. But inside, in our minds, we are not separate. We all came in as separate physical entities here. We're not separate. The thoughts you are having and the vibrations you are emitting and the vibrations I am emitting, it's, it's hard to say who's starting what from where. So when you actually start to tap into that, a shift you make inside you will create an incredible glitch in the matrix and that is the lever. And then you will have a very easy, obvious question in front of you. And when that obvious question is in front of you, you just walk in through it, and that will open more doors and more doors. And you may actually change up and change not just Hyderabad, but the world. Or you may have a son that becomes the next Gandhi, or your neighbor who becomes the mother Teresa. You, one doesn't know. But the important thing is not to get ambitious with these ideas, even of generosity and compassion, but to just know that if you feel something, like the 100th monkey experiment, you know about this? Uh, they taught 99 monkeys how to, like, I think, peel a banana in a certain way. And then they were, like, you know, saying, they just wouldn't learn, wouldn't learn, wouldn't learn. Then they added the 100th monkey, and the 100th monkey learned how to do this, and this was all in different places around the world. And the 100th monkey knows, and the next day, all the other 99 know. <laughs> Everyone knows. So if you do something, it's going to affect me. What if I do something, it's going to affect you. And right now, there's a lot of people thinking in a me-centered way. But if you start in a me-centered way, and I start in a me-centered way, and you, we all start doing it, if we all just go out and do one act of kindness today, right, right after this, imagine the ripples that you can create. It's not even that complicated. It does, maybe it will not work, but even that is working. Right? Maybe it will create a gigantic ripple, we don't know. But if we all just commit to doing that as a practice, then I think a lot of different doors will open. Maybe you start an awakened gathering in Hyderabad. And maybe it's just you and your friend. That's okay too. Maybe the whole city comes in. That's okay too. Maybe you start a Seva Cafe. Maybe you start a Karma Kitchen here in this city. Maybe it runs once a month. Maybe you go out and start a whole different innovation that you hadn't thought of. Maybe you have a dream about it tonight. You know. um, but that idea of not thinking, I want to go out and, you know, change. like don't use that kind of muscular energy for that. Use that mus channel that muscular energy to transform yourself. To do that small thing with such purity and such love that it shifts the matrix. And you will not get credit for it. You will not even be able to intellectually say, I did this. But because of you, someone else is going to have an incredible innovation. And we're all going to.
They always try to take things for granted. They won't give back. How to change them? <laughs> How to make that kind of sense? I think one thing is that we have to remember it's to be patient, to not rush it. You know, if if some rich guy says, yeah, you know, I have a lot of money and my wife is pregnant. And uh, instead of taking nine months, I'm going to have nine doctors, one month each, you know, let's get it done. Right? Let's make it efficient. <laughs> it doesn't work, you know. It takes nine months. That's nature's rule. So it's not our rule. Our job is to be patient. Our job is to work with it. Our job is to hold our center with equanimity and balance. So, look, so many times, if someone does something negative, we lose our balance. So our job is to retain that center. Our job is to not lose that balance. Our job is to be patient, is to be tolerant, and then be creative. You know, then see if you can like go out and you know, for example, these awakening gatherings. That's a creative expression because partly my mom said, "No, you can't do this." Finally, I got her on board, and I knew that she would never come out and volunteer with me. I knew I had to bring the mountain to her house. <laughs> so I said. Creatively, I brought it. Even I didn't know how big the mountain was going to be. Initially, it was just me and another friend. But I said, okay, the intention was I'm going to bring it to them. I'm going to bring it to my parents. They've given me so much, I need to give them the merits of this. And so, and it takes time. And now, today, my parents are right here. Like, they are, like, with everything I'm saying. Like, it just wouldn't be the same if I had tried to take a shortcut at that time. So, to realize that you're in conditions that are just perfect for you. For your journey and to hold that with kind of gentleness and with patience, but also creativity. You know? So read Daily Group, you know, and see how different people are trying different things. And see how you can, you know, we know about how had this great thing. He says you can try to break into a house from in many ways, you know, through the window, through like break a wall and go in many complicated ways. But the easiest way to go into someone's uh, is someone's uh, internal ecosystem is through the front door. What is the front door of the heart? If you can figure a way out to get to that guy's heart, then you're all free. So how do you creatively, you know, and the more you're connected to your heart, the more likely you will know a skillful means to get to the other person's heart. I was giving a talk at IIT Bombay one time, and this guy comes up, like a lot of people are very excited, you know. And this guy like a suit comes up very he's like, uh, sir, I just want to share something really honestly. And I was expecting a hug or something. You know, he's like, the whole time you were talking, I just wanted to kill you. <laughs> <laughs> was like, okay, nice to meet you too. You know? <laughs> and I completely, I was just not expecting that at all. And he just started getting really angry. And he was like, you know, this kind of generosity stuff makes us weak, and we're going to go back to the Stone Ages and all this. And I said, you know, I said, hey, brother, can I give you a hug? In the middle of this, right, I was like, I knew it was like hot oil, you know, he just wanted to fight. But I knew I had this somehow. And, and a lot of the context is made by your own presence. Right? So if he feels not threatened, he feels hurt, then I kind of just sneak in to his heart. I'm like, oh, can I just give you a hug, you know? And he was like, oh, he, he, before I even gave it, it's like this martial arts principle, he knew it was coming, you know? And I'm like, oh, man. And he, he knew kind of that he wanted it too, you know. <laughs> and in five minutes, he offers me a ride to the next venue. You know, we had this conversation. And so the more we practice, the more skillful we become at taking the context and finding the skillful means of just opening, you know, just going straight to the heart. And then once you're in the house, you can roam around wherever you want, you know. <laughs> no problem. The poor guy becomes a puppy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I actually want to kill you. Why am I giving you a ride? You know? <laughs> but it's but this is the law of love. Um, so it takes practice, it takes creativity. But it starts with you being patient and being so Deep, deep inside my heart, like, is it 
I think it's a process. Actually, what happens when you give, your mind becomes still. And when your mind becomes still, you fall into an interconnectedness, which is our real nature. And when there is this interconnectedness, you become, you don't need as much, you become simple. So the whole fundamental of giving, when, even if it's a practice you don't feel like giving, in that moment, any time you're generating that thought, no matter how shallow or deep, the degree to which you give, the depth of which you will experience that much stillness in your mind. That's how we most immediately start to receive that. Of course, there are karmic ripples of it. But this is an iterative process. So the more you give, the more stillness you have. The more stillness you have, the more you can give. And the more you can, and you actually do, the even more stillness. Right? So this becomes a virtuous cycle. But if you start taking, it becomes a vicious cycle. If you take, you have a turbulent mind and you feel like taking even more. Right? It's like scratching an itch. You know you really shouldn't be doing it, but then you do. You scratch that itch and you're scratching and scratching and now you're hurting and you're still scratching. Yeah. And that becomes a vicious thing. And we do this to our spirits, to ourselves all the time. And there's no such thing as just doing it to yourself. So when you do it to me, I'm doing it to you. And when you do it to you, you're doing it to me. So this idea of, is, so how do we get out of it on the virtuous side? which is this track of that you give, then you get a little deeper. So it's not that I need to be as deep as the Buddha and give in that, you know, keep wherever you are. But as soon any act of giving, as soon as you start, the Buddha used to say that if you actually knew the merits of giving, you would not have a single meal without giving. A single, Buddha didn't approximate. But he said things exactly as they were. But why would someone like Buddha say every single meal? Because in any act of generosity, Actually, you are starting to get on the virtuous side. So I don't think we need to think too much about uh, how deep it is. It will get deeper the more you practice. Yeah. But you can't force that, and you can't. You don't want to analyze and go into analysis paralysis. Yeah. Like, oh, until I become, you know, I will then do this when I get to this level. Then you're like, you know, neither here nor there. You're like an armchair explorer. Great, I'll end with the story here and then we'll watch the video. Thank you all. This is so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> One thing that I think we can all do is something that we make our interns do. Uh, this actually relates to the video and also to your comment earlier. So one of the things, whenever people enter with service space for the summer, uh, we have them do multiple things. One of the things is a 30-day kindness challenge. We now have a 21 day, but the number of days is not. But the idea is, every day you do a unique act of kindness. It's not a small act, an extra act. Now it sounds so simple, right? Okay, you know, I can be kind. Right, right now, if you were to think of it, you probably already think of five ways in which you can do it. No big deal. Except for what happened. There's some interesting things that happened. So that there was this young girl in town, in Louisiana. Uh, she was going to college and she was an intern. She had got a chance to do this. So the first seven days, right, she starts to think of all the things that she was doing. First 10, 7, 10 days. All the things, yeah, of course, I can do this, 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 this. The next 10 days, she starts to become super creative. So her brain is creating new neural pathways. You know, it's like taking new roads. And once you take those new roads, whenever you're in trouble, you will have access to those roads. You know, so you start creating new pathways. You say, oh, I can be kind, I can be generous, I can be generous in this way, in that way. I hadn't thought of that before. And so the second 10 days is this whole, like, is this process of becoming very creative and creating new pathways. And the third 10 days is where really interesting things happen. Unpredictable, amazing things, actually. In the sense, that this kind of muscle, like when you go to a gym, you work out, you create a kind of physical muscle. Kindness is a muscle in that way too. It takes practice. And when you do this, there's this inner resource, there's this inner strength. And this inner strength flows where it needs to It starts to heal you. And it's unpredictable where it's going to go, but we've seen it in so many people. So this girl, Tao, day 22, she tells us, 
So, so we all, they do an act of kindness and they share a story and we as mentors like, you know, support them and help them uh, if they need help. So day 22 comes, she says, today I decided to be kind to myself. And I said, great, okay, let's see what party she threw herself, you know. Um, she says, she then explains that when she was 10 or 11, she was in the back seat of the car and dad was driving and mom was in the passenger seat. The car gets in an accident. Mom dies. A month after that, dad, probably on guilt, is prepared to this jet fight. And it is still to this day. And she had never been able to get over this. And so it happens. Day 22, she says, I never had the courage to visit. This is 10 years after her mom passed away, more than 10 years. I never had the courage to visit my mom's funeral son. Today, I decided to be kind to myself, and I went and visited my mom's funeral son. This resource was not because she was a volunteer with Service Space, was not because she was connected to her mentors, was not because some divine link came into her. It happened because she and when you practice, and this is nature is compassion, nature is kind, it will take this flow and pass it exactly where it needs to go. And we will heal ourselves and we will heal the world. So, based on the inspiration of these interns, we decided to do a 21 day kindness challenge. This is before the gratitude challenge. And so, all of these people, thousands of people from many countries, they would all get one act of kindness to do every day. And they went out and did it. Everyone in, I think, 98 countries, uh, they went out and did this act. And so as they do this act, uh, all these stories come in. And Nebo, who used to be, he studied at Orton Business School, one of the top in the world. Then he comes to the, uh, then he has a whole rapping career. He's a rapper. And then he leaves all that, goes to the Himalayas, and he says, uh, searching for me, you know, meaning in life. Ends up at the Gandhi Ashram starts working with slum children, lives in the slums himself, puts on a performance for two, uh, for two years, he worked with 16 slum children to create a show called Pick Up on, on Blindness, and he tours across the US, UK, and Canada, but he had given up music for many years. He says, look, the music industry is all just negative, I'm not interested in it. And then one fine day, he says, I need to reconnect with my roots. And he was a very, he's a very talented, as you will see, he's a very talented uh, musician. And so he says, I'm now reconnecting with it, but in a very different way. I want to make good use of my talents. I want my talents to be in service to the world. I want my talents to be in service to those four shifts. May there be more goodness. And so here he is, part of this kindness challenge. He sees all these stories. He says, I want to give all these people a song. And this is the first song that he has sang after like, really letting it all go. Announcing that he was, he was kind of famous, very famous. Maybe. I don't know, why, those are all relative terms, but he was just a very lovable guy. And it's an honor actually to have him in the room here as well. So we have this song uh, called Being Kind, made by Nemo, as a gift to all those people who were being kind for her. So I think you'll totally enjoy this song. So we'll do this song, we'll leave Smile Dex somewhere in the back. That whole bag is like Smile Dex. So that way everyone can take them, and I hope uh, we all go out and do at least one act of kindness, uh, you know, maybe today or somehow and shift the matrix. Uh, so here is this song. Is the AD connected? any budget, all labor of love, and in six days. I mean, including the song, the beat, the video, everything. I mean, only love can do things like this. Uh, so, super great. Let's just test. Oh, here. Oh, 
Thank you so much um, for all the this. A lot of good people coming together, you know. Hyderabad, not just that, as you know, I would say, Jai Jagat, the whole world is changing, you know. If, if we think, though, only, the, you know, if we trust the papers, it's just bad news everywhere. But I am here to say there's a lot of good happening in the world. People like Nemo are waking up, and they are saying we can do better than what humanity is telling us we are. So we are all in this together. I love you all. Thank you so much. This is um, very touching to our hearts. Um, no words coming right now in the logical mind, but it's a pure heart. Your pure uh, love and the kindness that you shared. And, um, when I met you uh, a year back or a few months back, after that, something really inspired me. And um, definitely we all, we all were touched by this. It may not be a big thing that we do for the world, but small kinds of act, acts of kindness that can really be a big change. Uh, this message is so profound, subtle, and but yet very, very deep and profound. Thank you, Devon. And uh, uh, we'd like to, uh, all of us will, Give a big clap to you. Touching uh, the video that you have prepared made so much heart, so much heart, and uh, it's a blessing to be in your presence too. Thank you. receive a hug from these two beautiful beings, you know? Don't forget to receive a hug. <laughs> we take the vibration of uh, Nimo and uh, Nipun. Thank you. Thank you, friends. Thank you for uh, coming over for this evening. It's a beautiful evening. Something that we can carry in our hearts. Thank you.